Hello, welcome to IC3D people. Today we're going to look at making this very simple scene in Unreal Engine 5. We're going to look at setting up assets through Quixel Megascans and using the built-in bridge. We are going to look at setting up some simple lighting. And we're also going to be looking at setting up a very basic Niagara dust particle system. So let's jump into it. First, we're going to go file new level. Now I'm using the third person project template, but uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use here. And I'm going to select empty level. So the first thing I'm going to do here is show you how to import the content from Quixel Megascans. So to do that, simply come up to this content section, click on that, click on Quixel bridge. Once that opens, you can now search for the content and assets you want to import. Uh, I'm going to use a variety of assets. I'm going to leave the links for that in the description. All you need to do is copy and paste that asset ID into this search browser to find it. I'll give you an example. I'm going to use one of these foods. Uh, this banana should suffice. I'm going to right click on it and I'm just going to copy the asset ID. Now you already have this. So from the home page, paste it in, hit enter, and you're going to get that asset that I'm using. Uh, of course, you can always use your own assets as well. Once you've uh, got that, you'll need to sign in. If you haven't already got an account with Epic, you'll need to create one. Once we're signed in, you can then download it. Okay, once the download's completed, you can click on this add button, and that will successfully export it from bridge into your Unreal Engine 5. You can hit control space and click on the Megascans directory. Then click on the 3D assets directory. And you can see here we have the banana that we've just um, imported. So to get that into the scene, all you need to do is drag it in and you can see it's there. And I'm just going to scale it up to make it a bit easier to see. Uh, there we go. So now you have a banana in your scene. We obviously don't want that, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Let's move on to the next part, which is uh, dragging and dropping all those assets into place into our scene for composition. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on create, go to shapes, and I'm going to add in a plane. Um, we're going to get rid of this plane later, but for now, all this is going to do is just give us somewhere to place our table. So I'm going to press, um, by the way, uh, the shortcuts for the transforms is W for moving, E for rotation, R for scale. Um, so once you've got that plane in there, I'm then just going to come up to this button up here where it says lit. I'm going to change that to unlit. And what that'll do is give us the ability to uh, see all our objects. Um, by default, the lit section requires lights to see uh, materials and shading. Um, because we have no lights, we won't be able to see it. So we're going to put in unlit, which will let us see everything. Um, so what I'm going to do is jump over to my first uh, asset, which is this table. I'm just going to click it, drag it in. Right, like that. Very good. Um, and if you're finding that your so I'm going to press W to, to move it. So if you're finding your tables or your assets aren't hitting the floor, what you can do is click on your asset and press end on your keyboard. And what that'll do is move your asset down to the next surface. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is add in the chair and I'm going to press E to rotate. And then I'm going to press end to put it down, which it is. And press W to move it. Need to rotate it a little bit just so it's a little bit on angle. Um, it does look like the chair is a bit too big. So I'm just going to press R to scale. Something like that should be okay. Yep, W to move. I'm just going to move it in as if it was under the table a bit. Then I'm going to hold down Alt and then I'm going to click on this uh, X axis here and I'm going to move it across like that. And that will let me just automatically duplicate. So the next thing I'm going to do is import the books. Rather than watch me do the same thing that I've just done with the chairs, I'm going to speed that up.
Okay, so I've imported these books and I've placed them in the in the positions that I want them to go in. So let's move on to the next bits, which are the uh, pencil and the ruler. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the composition. So that was a very simple, a very quick composition of this table and books. Um, and we can move on to the next part, which is setting up some lights. So the first item I want to do here is the post-processing volume. Uh, so I'm going to click on create, visual effects and post-processing volume. Now in the search details, I'm gonna type infinite. And then I'm just gonna I'm going to tick this here and that'll just make sure it's uh, scalable to the whole level and I'm going to close that and I'm just going to type exposure exposure and I'm going to find the min and max exposure brightness so this is on 0 0.03 that's good I'm just going to copy that value and I'm going to paste it into there now what that'll stop the level from doing is uh, fading in and fading out to try and find the, the right exposure of the lights and I will just keep it constant. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in a volumetric fog but before I do that I'm just going to get rid of this plane because we no longer need it and I'm going to change the lighting from unlit to lit. So everything will disappear but that's okay. We're going to go to create and then visual effects and exponential height fog. In here we we can now see we're getting some silent hill type of situation but we're just going to type in fog and we're going to enable volumetric fog and we're going to change the cutoff distance to as high of as a value you can go i also want to change the fog density from 0 0.02 to 0 0.1 and what this is going to do is just give us um, some some really nice uh, volumetric lighting so uh, now that that's done, so now we can add in our first spotlight. So to do that, I'm going to go create lights, spotlight. And then I am going to right click on the spotlight and go to pilot spotlight. This will let us uh, go into a first person mode where we can easily position our spotlight. I'm then going to put it around something like that on the books. It's very bright now, but that's okay. We can then eject and that'll take us out of the light and we can see what the lighting is. Now, this is very bright. So I'm going to just click on the spotlight and I'm just going to change the light intensity from eight to one. And we're going to have the something that comes out like that. I'm also going to change the outer cone radius angle to something a bit smaller it's just something like that so it's just clipping the table and I'm just going to increase the inner cone to something like that and I'm just going to take the attenuation length and I'm just going to do it so it's just around about the same length as the table the next thing I want to do is add in some ambient lighting to add in the ambient lighting I'm going to go to create, create lights, point light. I'm just going to move it into a position at the front of the table. Like so, it's very bright. So I'm going to change the intensity from eight to 0 0.00005 and I am just going to zoom in to see the effects here. I might make this a tiny bit brighter, so just take off one of the zeros. Okay. And I'm going to scale down the attenuation radius, something like that, because I don't want it to affect everything. And I'm going to increase the soft source radius just to take off the shine of the books. And I'm going to remove cast shadows so it doesn't uh, affect the, any of the shadows. 
or create any of the shadows rather. Uh, so to make some more of this ambient lighting, I'm just simply going to duplicate this slice and place them around the scene. I'll do that in fast mode. I'll come back to you on that's once that's done. Okay, and that gives us our ambient lighting. Next, we're going to make the dust particles using Niagara system. So to do that, I'm just going to jump into the content directory and I'm going to right click and go to FX and go to Niagara system. I'm going to choose new system from selected emitters and click next. And then I'm going to go to hanging particles. I'm going to press the plus sign and I'm going to click finish. I'm then going to call this ns underscore dust3 because I've already made this a couple of times. I've missed clicked and press 4, that's okay. And to make some adjustments here, I'm going to click on the spawn rate. I'm going to click on the spawn rate and change that from 50 to 25. And I'm going to go to the uh, box location and untick that and untick the spear location and I'm going to click plus and I'm going to add in a cone location and this is going to mimic the shape of our light um, then what I'm going to do is click on the scale sprite size and I'm going to change the scale curve from 1 to 0.1 um, and then I'm going to jump into the sprite renderer. Now I'm going to show you the material I used. Um, I've already adjusted this one, but it's a very simple uh, change. All I've done is added these two nodes here. So, and I've just added a constant of 0.05 and a multiply, and I've added that into the opacity. And all that's going to do is significantly reduce the transparency of the uh, the sprite and that's because in a dark situation like we have um, the the sprite opacity be way too bright otherwise so now uh, we've got that I am just going to open that back up because I accidentally closed it I'm just going to press save and make sure that's compiled and okay and I'm just going to drag that into my scene and I'm going to push it up just roughly in spot and then I'm going to go to right click and I'm going to pilot so what this is going to do is let me pilot it so that's going to let me pilot it and I'm going to push it into place and I'm just going to try and mimic the direction of the spotlight as best as I can right and I'm going to eject out of that so now you can see in our scene we have uh, the dusk particles coming out now what I'm going to do is um, change a bit of the settings on the cone location to better suit the shape of our light so to do that I'm going to click on here I'm going to go to dust 4 and I'm just going to drag this down and maybe just move this over something like that maybe over here is better and I'm going to click on cone location and I'm just going to adjust these settings until they mimic the shape of that cone light a bit better. So I'm just going to drag it down something small. Yep, yeah, that looks better. And I'm just going to make this slightly bigger, maybe 150 or so. Okay, that's good. I'm going to save, compile, close. And there we have just a very simple change to an, to a Niagara system, which is going to create some dust in our scene. So now all that's really left to do is just tweak your scene a bit until you get it the way you want it to look. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just also going to change the color of the light. This is optional and this is purely subjective. I'm just going to make it like a kind of like a greeny 
color, I suppose. Something like that. Um, and then all that's left to do is if you want to use this for uh, a cutscene or anything like that, is to add a camera. So I'm just going to go to create cinematic camera. And just like all the other other items, we can right click it and go to pilot. And I'm just going to pin this so I can keep seeing it. And what I'm going to do is click on the camera and just uh, get the manual focus distance and put it on put it on the book and to get it into focus. Uh, and from here, you can adjust that camera the way you need to. Um, but that's pretty much it. It was a nice, quick, simple, easy way to use lighting and Niagara. So until next time, guys. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell notification and I'll see you next time. Bye.